everyone, welcome to another Doctor Who review with my lovely co-host Zia. And Hi! I love that you are like you've already have the pumpkin out. Oh, it's Halloween time. Oh my god, I forgot my cat. I have a cat. I wonder if I can reach it. Hang on. This is important. <laughs> go, go go get your cat. Um in the meantime, uh welcome. We have Three great episodes to review today. We have Girl in the Fireplace and Rise of the Cybermen and the Age of Steel, which I'm pretty freaking pumped to uh, review this because the last week or so while I was promoting this, I had so many people say Girl in the Fireplace is the best episode. I mean, some of the people um, on the Real BBC, I don't remember who it was, Gary as or Mahler said that episode is definitely top 10. Someone in my chat earlier said this is even BBC's top 10 episodes. So this is hyping it up. And I feel like I was worried that it was overhyped. But even if it was overhyped, it was worth it. It was worth it. Girl in the Fireplace. Right. Right. It's such a good episode. It really I've watched I watched it twice. I watched it uh, again today after watching it like last week. Hi, Tug. Mm -hmm. Hi, Tugs. Oh, your cat is so cute. It's a little fluffy. Mm. I will tell you, it's a little glowy kitty. It's purple. I got so excited. It's Halloween time and I'm slowly going to start collecting more Halloween things. I don't care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. uh, is my audio breaking up for anyone? Just let me know. Good question. Oh, lots of buffering. Is the video buffering and I'm buffering? I mean, you are fine to me, but I, I'm also not on the stream. <laughs> mm. I mean, like, watch. Sorry, I'm seeing you through Streamlab. I mean, God damn it. I'm stream really yards, tired. Yeah, you know what I Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't really know what else to do about buffering. I can check my mic. Otherwise, let me just make sure that's the correct mic. It's the correct mic on my part. I can pump my volume up. Is that better? I don't know. <laughs> You sound there, to me. There is lag. Okay. Well, I'm I'm sorry. I don't really know what else to do with that. Ooh. Well, hopefully it fixes itself. Canadian internet. Maybe Justin Trudeau is finally taking me out. Damn it, Justin. Son yeah. You son, son of a beach. Uh okay. So, well, let's let's try to go on with this. If not, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the chat. But so girl in the fireplace. The first thing. Ah, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, Madame de Pompadour. I did not expect her to be like a queen. Or well, she was the well, king's the king's mistress, mistress. But, but she, she got along title. very well with the queen. She did. She had a title. Renette was her name, and then Madame de Pompadour was her title, which is so cool um, that she was just like, yeah. When Rose was like, oh, the queen must have loved her, and uh, and. And the doctor was like, no, they did actually. They got along really well. They're just, friends. Just different in France. Yeah. Like it was just normal for the king to have. I, I would imagine that it was probably a relief for the queen that she had like nights off from her husband who could go have a lover. And she's like, I just want to sleep. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, like just watching even the, um, the, the crown and how the queen and king slept, which was in different beds. And right. Uh, uh, if I had to be summoned just for some nookie nookie while I'm asleep, I, I don't know if I'd be okay with that. Right. That happened in even Game of Thrones too. Or not Game of Thrones. House of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. no, thank you. If I'm asleep, just let me sleep, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't so. wake me up. Uh, but yeah, I like, I just, it's interesting because so much of it is cultural, right? Like it's, you, you look at it now and you're like, wow, I, I couldn't imagine that. But it's, in a different time, in a different culture, in a different country, they're like, what? This is just normal. It's crazy. Yeah, also, also, think about this. Okay. <laughs> to bring it to modern spaces with like how red pill people talk where they're like, if you are the top dog. <laughs> <laughs> that never doesn't make me laugh. <laughs> it just, it just, it, I mean, there might be a little right about this. You know, a king, he's allowed to have many women. It just makes sense. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's the king. <laughs> he literally do whatever he wants. Everyone wants to be him. He's the most valued man in that society. So, I mean, hey, uh, he he had his wife, and I'm sure he had more than one mistress. That was just probably top mistress. 
Yeah, it was probably knows? his top mistress. And it seemed, you know, she also had the doctor. And I bet you that the, the mistresses also had other lovers too. You know what I mean? Like everybody was just out there doing what they're doing. Bang. How did you feel about her like kissing the doctor so passionately? All right. So first of all, I was jealous in a few different ways. I was jealous on behalf of Rose. I was like, uh, excuse me, madam. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Doctor. Then I was just jealous on behalf of myself because I was like, God damn it, she's so lucky. I, I'll make his name said it. <laughs> <laughs> why can't that be me? Sorry, Nick. <laughs> like, why wasn't I? No, it's, yeah, it's gonna be fine. I'm sure there's plenty of people he want to kiss too. <laughs> He's like, and Margot Robbie, please. <laughs> well, what's funny was I, I remember watching it and I was like, huh, there's like some sexual tension here. Is it coming from one or the other or both? And I felt both, both, both. I like you can tell as soon as the doctor goes, "My, how you've grown!" <laughs> and you're oh like, my God. <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, yeah, doctor, you're a little pervy there." And she I mean, like, beautiful. She, she was, she is. Um, someone told me that apparently that was his girlfriend at the time. Mm. I could see why it looked so believable that kiss. Ooh, so, until we get yeah. into, oh my God, now I'm, we're going to, cause we're going to see his real life wife later too. And I'm sure the chat will tell you when you're watching, like this yeah. is his wife. That's going to be so interesting because uh, <laughs> they met on the set of Dr. Who and now they're married. They've got like a bunch of kids. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be very, I mean, Hey, it makes it more believable. I, I felt bad for Rose. And of course, when she had like kind of found out, she's like, who's this chick? <laughs> But they still had a really nice moment. And I kind of love that. I love that Rose like had that moment with her and didn't get angry at her. It was more just like this sort yeah. of understanding that they had between the two of them. And they shared this really nice moment. And I, I kind of loved that. It just mm -hmm. sort of shows how Car Rose has grown as a character. Because I feel like she would have been more jealous a few uh, uh -huh. episodes ago or maybe even last season. But it's like now she's she's, she's growing. Been She's being hit with a lot of women of his past and his current. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. She's understanding that the doctor is, um, he wears many hats and he has many women in his life in general. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, Andrew, Andrew Thomas, thank you for the $5, by the way. So it's Doctor Who fact. Sophia Miles and David Tennant dated for a couple of years after this episode before he got married to his current wife. So that's spicy. But that's the thing. If they, I don't know if they were dating during or if because this was, you know, this kiss or the scenes or whatnot sparked the romance. But hey, I think when you work so closely with people, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. That's why actors and actresses are always leaving each other for their co-stars because they're literally like spending all this time together. They're kissing mm -hmm. on his bed. It's all hot and heavy. There's chemistry there. I feel How like do being you not know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel like being an actor and being in a monogamous relationship has to be really tough. Would be really, really, really yeah. tough. Um, Deranged Lunatic, aka DL for $1.99. Thank you so much. Uh, it says the actress played in Underworld movies. I don't remember the character she played, but Holy I got to look that up now. I got to look that up. Same, because that's going to, I I watched, I recently watched the first Underworld again. And I don't, for some reason, I'm like not placing her. Mm. Huh. Weird. I'm going to try to remember this, Disprey. When you realize it's his wife, the story gets a bit weird. Yeah, so it it is. That's the the funny thing is you'll understand once you watch it. And they're, and they're like, oh, so that's actually his real life wife. And you'll be like, oh, because it is. It's it the character that she plays is uh, an interesting one, so that'll be fun. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, the other thing I kind of wanted to like say, especially about like the kissing scene and seeing the girl on the fire across the fire, and kind of he from the very beginning he had this like overarching need to protect her, help her. Like, wh why are we watching her? What's going on? So he had this, like, unique interest in her and to save her from them. So I feel like there, between that, knowing that she was, like, this pretty woman and maybe part of the monarchy in a sense, that he was just interested in her. That's, like, an interesting person. He's always interested in, like, the weird, the crazy historical figures. And I honestly, at one point, I was like, oh, my God. I could see her as like a companion. 
Yes. And I think that that makes the ending all the more sad because she almost became a companion. And that was like heartbreaking. We won't get into it yet, but that part was like, it almost made me yeah. cry. I mm -hmm. literally when we got to the end. I was like, no. I, yeah, it was, it was so tough to watch because there's clearly this connection. You kind of hunt, you're right. A hundred percent. She has, um, uh, companion vibes where you're like, oh, I can see this. They have such a great connection, such great chemistry. It, mm -hmm. I actually didn't realize they were dating uh, that they either were dating or dated. So that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she would have made a, she would have made a really great companion and sort of the way that her and Rose got along. I think that it actually would have worked out really well with mm -hmm. the three of them, which I think kind of like, like I shared the queen and the king together. And now I'm sharing the doctor. The doctor. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. Uh -huh. Well, when you're traveling through time and space. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. See, it's not just us that thinks that, but th this episode was particularly really good the way they kind of laid it out. You saw a little bit of about the fireplace and her asking the doctor for help. So you're like, mm. she somehow knows the doctor. So this is interesting. Create that interest. And then you go into the spaceship, which has the recreation of that fireplace. I'm just like, I like the way they set everything up. This episode had a lot of mystery, a lot of uh, curiosity throughout, and I think they unfolded it in a really great way. I, I, I agree. I think they do such a cool job of setting it up too. And I love that when you finally start to realize it's such a unique, it, it, it so much of it is focused on Madame de Pompadour or Renette which I think is great. This is a very character episode, but the underlying story is really cool too, how this ship was stranded and it started using human body parts to repair itself. And it was looking for oh, a brain so and creepy. it was so creepy and it was such a cool premise that I just, everything about this episode is like perfect. And I think that's why it's such a good episode because mm -hmm. the story is cool. It has uh, really creepy factors. They're literally scanning this little girl's brain waiting until she gets the proper age um, because it's a compatible brain with the ship. And like, that's so interesting. And they mm -hmm. killed the, and the ship killed the entire crew. Like it's so, it's such a good episode. It's, like it, it yes. was so weird. I thought the clock people, it, it was an interesting use of like robotic equipment and them finding this enigmatic character with the perfect brain in order to get the ship fixed was apparently the easier path than when, of course, the doctor had suggested, why didn't you go to your um, like sh shipyard or parts or whatever right. it was? That would have been way easier. It would um, have been. But they're instead, they're like, no, no, no. We're going to find this uh, this young woman in 17th or 16th century France. Because <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, I guess they did what they thought they had to do. Mm -hmm. It was so funny. Mm hmm. Uh, we have Tricky here for five dollars says, uh, thank you, Tricky, by the way, she was played. Uh, she played a minor ish role in the first underworld. She was the vampire girl that played the side chick to the vampire guy that wanted to take over. I oh. might need to rewatch this in order to know. I think I she, did. She have short blonde hair in that movie and she was like hated Kate, the Kate Beckinsale character. I think I know who you're talking about. I mm. I'm think if I'm remembering it correctly, that's so weird because she looks so tall to me in that movie. But in this episode, she looks short. So I don't know. Stripping me out. She could have actually been wearing flat shoes underneath all her outfits and we wouldn't that's have known. True. That's true. And I actually don't know how tall David Tennant is. So, yeah. And she also tall. could have been kneeling or who knows, like some sort of like or he could have been standing on a step. They do that all the time with like Tom Cruise. That's true. That's true. They make Tom Cruise. Like, it's funny. I did because I worked in L.A. for uh, seven years. I waited tables in L.A. and I've waited and met. And I also did red carpets like I interviewed people and I had people in for interviews like in studio. And uh, I've met so I've met a ton of celebrities and it is wild how much how tiny and short they are in person. And it, you're, mm -hmm. it's not all of them, but so many of them. You're like, oh, my God, you're so skinny and you're so small. It's so but weird. You seem so big in, you see, on screen. Yeah, it's such a trip. But they're like tiny in person. <laughs> uh, thank you again, Tricky. We also have Draco Orem, Orium, sorry, for five Australian says, hey, ladies, fun bit of info. Tenet's wife is the daughter of another doctor. What? Also, this episode is referenced in Capaldi's first episode. I do not remember that. It's been long enough that I don't remember that at all. 
we'll have so to remember that to when it. we get there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know when we get there eventually. <laughs> oh, someone in the oh chat said David Tennant is six one. Oh, he's tall. Okay. Oh, he is a giant. God. Also, she probably wore heels. Someone said that she was five seven in the chat. Um, Holocron. Yes. Thank you, Holocron. That's pretty four, tall five, for, six. A, for a lady. That's like my height. So. You're five six. Yeah, you are. When I met you, I was like, oh my gosh, extra girl's so tall. Because you mm -hmm. and you were also mm -hmm. wearing heels. Yeah, uh, yes. I, yeah. I told Mark, I'm like, I'm just gonna wear heels. We're gonna be sitting most of the time anyway. So no, don't, don't worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, uh that is interesting. I wonder what uh daughter of the fifth doctor. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you, Zav. Dang. It's really in the family, isn't it? That there's a lot of there's a lot of Doctor Who. I, I, I don't want to say incest, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's not really incest when it's, it's the same really. guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's incesty depending on their relationship. It's a little weird. And wait till we get to the episode when you find out who his wife is. You'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> it's a little, it's a I can't creepy. wait. I can't wait. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Then, oh, where, where do we go um, from here? The part where he he comes back to the ship and he finds a horse. I like that they inject humor. Like, where did the horse come from? How did it get there? Did the clock people bring them on? Or has the horse always been there the entire time? I think the horse must have come over from, because did he find a way to get into the gardens? He's like, where'd you come from? Oh, that's true. So the horse must have just found his way over onto the ship and was like, oh, I'm just here now. And the clock people are like, oh, we don't need that he, thing. So whatever. <laughs> he's just following the do the doctor all around. He's like, well, they say horses are can, can tell if you're a good person. So maybe he, the horse is like, hmm. I'm liking this dude a yeah, lot. This guy's chill. Let's follow him around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love horses so much. Yeah. Uh, They're beautiful creatures. Uh, I am not good at approaching them unless someone comes with me type of thing that knows horses. They're get, really big. No. So I it can I can see how it can be intimidating. I um I definitely prop might feel the same way if I hadn't grown up with horses. Like because I used to ride mm. in rodeos and like would I oh, rode a lot. That is really cool. That I is really cool. It. Uh, if only we could have them. They're so expensive to maintain. They're very expensive to mm -hmm. maintain. They feeding them alone. <laughs> yeah, feeding them the vet bills, and then you have to make sure you exercise them. That's yeah. just you know common courtesy of having a horse. Yes. Oh gosh. So uh, when when uh, that line, what was it? You can't keep the horse, and then the doctor goes, "But I let you keep Mickey." <laughs> getting referred to as animals and i find it absolutely perfect i, I find it perfect <laughs> mickey has such a good arc too and i love how we see it you know come in the next couple of episodes oh, yes. too it's yes. i know we'll get to that he has such a great arc um but i definitely do like the little moments that mickey and rose have like when the doctor goes he's like don't go looking for it and then he goes back through the fireplace and rose is you know, picks up her, her fire <gasps> extinguisher. Yeah. And yes, Mickey's that was so okay. like, no, no, I just, I love, yeah, I loved it. Mickey was like, he said not to go. And she's like, I know. And he's like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to pick this up. And then he's walking around with that thing. I'm like, dude, doesn't even look scary at all. I'm sorry, no. Mickey. You're just so adorable. He really is like a golden retriever. He's just like, yes, yes I love you, Rose. I'm going to follow you and make sure you're okay to the best of my ability. He's <laughs> too much of a little goober. It's true. He's just mm -hmm. not threatening, but he is so cute. And I love where they have that little moment. You can tell they're having fun together, despite Rose being a bit trepidatious of him coming initially. <laughs> like she was, oh my gosh. she was like not into it. Cause, cause really I'm, I thought she was going to end up being like mad at him for a while or something like that. And right. she just kind of fell into like their friendship relationship kind of again with the goofiness. And I, I really like that, that sh she didn't hold this like underlying grudge towards him because I think other people would. Yes, I agree. I Most agree. I think people. that they, it was, it was cute. It was cute. By that time, I was like, "Wow, they're having fun together." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that 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 was great to see them. Uh, it, after that moment, to it, it was ingrained in me. Like Rose just never listens; she does what she wants. And you know, I mean, they they did tell us that specifically, but you know, we we saw it like maybe what 
at least a few times in the past. And then this was like the, uh, oh, we're leaning into this like heavily now. Yeah, I do like that about Rose. She's like, um, what's his face from uh, South Park? Whatever, whatever. I do what I want. <laughs> do you remember <laughs> the episode with Cartman? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. God, uh, that uh, the other moment that like the super pivotal moment that I kind of want to talk about was the scanning the uh, Renette's brain. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, with her and the doctor. Oh my god, and she saw into him. That was it. It was it was this like weird connection that I don't think the doctor has had in a long time, and this is just my um, uh, guess that he hasn't felt anyone understand him to this level. Right. Right. Because he shared a part of himself that he normally can't. Because there, I feel like there are certain things in your head that you just can't put into words. The fact that she saw that he knows the titles of all the stars. I, it's That's mm -hmm. a part that you can't, sh that either he's not willing to share or maybe you can't share. And it doesn't come up in a, conversation. Exactly. Exactly. Why would yeah. it? Like, So it's such an intimate connection. So that's true. That's so true. Yeah. Like she knows who he is, the doctor, that he's a time lord, that he I, I love that she called him her lonely angel. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think he he has kind of expressed that he has been very lonely through life and just not in those specific words throughout all the adventures that we've seen in the last um season and a half. And I I think he understood that she was lonely too. Mm -hmm. And that having her understand that and both kind of relating built their like friendship to like a, a level that is actually surpassing rose on that closeness in, in my opinion but yeah i agree i actually do agree with you him and her his, i think the thing that rose and the doctor has maybe that renette and the doctor don't have they have a deeper maybe understanding but rose and the doctor have this companionship of spending a lot of time together that you don't get unless you travel side by side. Sort of like when you're with a partner and they always say, you know, if you're dating someone, try traveling with them and then you'll know mm -hmm. whether you're a good fit. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think they sort of have that. They have that familiarity and that comfortableness of being together for a long time and of traveling and seeing the world. So that's a bond that they'll have. But you're mm -hmm. right. I think there's like that deeper thing that they just they won't share. Yeah, th things that aren't said normally unless there's like some like crazy thing that happens or therapy or whatever. But I'm right. sure therapy does not really happen in the French. Uh, Probably not. I don't know what it's called. Dyn I was about to call it dynasty. <laughs> Kingdom? Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that sounds <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, and it, it's been it, it's been kind of nice to see that because we've not seen him be super vulnerable. We've seen him angry. We've seen him very happy. And this was kind of one of those like, he really feels understood. And uh, earlier in my chat, I was like, he feels seen. He feels heard. Like, not to bring up words that are super cringe in this world, but no, wait, you're he kind of right. is. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. He feels seen and heard. Oh, and they had like, oh, God, that kiss was really sweet. Oh, my God. And mm -hmm. now I get it because they were either dating or about to. <laughs> yeah. And the, the, the biggest part for them, though, was because... Uh, she was traveling through time slowly at regular speed and he would come in, leave for a minute or two, come back and it's years later. And I think that was such a, a fleeting thing for him especially and kind of bringing it back to how I thought she could have been a companion. I think comparing it and contrasting it to last episodes that we watched where we saw the companion near uh, a couple years down the road after he's left, this is like the whole life of someone who could have been a companion till the very end. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. And imagine just because we're seeing it mostly from the doctor's perspective, imagine from her perspective where she's just living her life. And there are these little pockets of time throughout her life where this person that she sort of shares these moments with keeps popping up. I just, I, I can't imagine what an interesting life that would be. You know, you're living this life. You're the you're the king's lover. And then you have this, you know, lonely angel that just comes out of nowhere. And uh, and you sort of share this connection with them. I really like that. It's and because it's these very small moments throughout life. And we just see them as one continuous moment for her. But for her, it's, you know, months and years in between each meeting. Mm hmm. 
And I don't know, maybe some people have this, like I don't specifically have this, but when you have that one friend that like comes in and out of your life and you know that there's a special bond, like I've heard of this, I, I don't have it. So I don't know about it personally, but it sounds like a really special thing like to have. I mean, her relationship with the king she knows she's not number one in that sense. Like she's number one with the mistresses, but she'll never be like the only person for him. So I think she she's a very cultured woman in relationships. Yeah. And her status. So yes. it's it's very interesting seeing someone understanding of that. Like I will have that. And she shares this with the king. Yeah, like, and the king is, is understanding. The, the king and the doctor have a moment. And even the king is understanding of when Renette, uh, Renette leaves him the letter. And, you know, you can tell that the king is absolutely heartbroken because the king did love her. He was, she was a mistress, but he loved her. And I think it's really oh obvious. <gasps> that moment. Oh, my God. I, right? I thought, oh, so, okay, wait, let's, let's backtrack that moment yeah. when he meets the king yeah. again. So when he comes back and he's, uh, backtrack it even more. <laughs> they finish the fight she everything's happy they think they're stuck they go to the fireplace and they're like oh my god this is so exciting and i honestly thought i was like he could just live here and then catch up with them in a couple thousand years it's fine <laughs> exactly he could because he, it, it does, he doesn't age it doesn't matter yeah he go, finds a ship finds the ship they're on gets back with them They'll be like an, a couple hours late. A couple hours for them, you know, two thousand, however many thousand years for him, no big deal. Yeah, yeah, time. So when they find the the fireplace, which uh, that's obviously how this whole thing starts. I thought that was such a special moment. Like, oh, she moved the exact fireplace over to where she is now. So and that it's working again. So he's like, go pack a bag, find a star. I'll I'll, I'll meet you here. And I was like, no, 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 don't do that don't leave because then left. you know and then you know exactly and he should have known better and the fact that he can't and she's a historical figure i mean i didn't know when she died or how old she was when she died because i don't remember history like that but <laughs> but oh my god when he comes back and i gotta say whoever they got as the actor to be the king did a phenomenal job he did such a good job of just showing how much pain he was in by losing a woman that he very clearly loved and she mm -hmm. was only 43, which is very young. That's uh, very young. Is it young in, for that time, though? Even in 16th century. Yeah, I mean, people died young all the time. So the average life expen expectancy was lower. But people still live to be old very often. It's just, you know, we didn't have things like antibiotics and vaccines. And so there were, you know, people died of cholera and, <laughs> and dental work. Like, there's just a lot of advances that we've made that can save people. Uh. But if someone didn't have any issues... They could theoretically live to be pretty old. So, okay. In the 1700s in France, it was below 30 in the late 1700s. So she actually was over the age of life expectancy. Wow. Lovely. That's so wild. 30. Can you imagine 30? Because again, but that's because they didn't have any, if you lived with no issues, you could live to be really old. But if you had like an abscessed tooth or something, that oh, would kill you. A, a cut could kill you. A cut could kill, exactly. You drink a little bit of dirty water, like, oh my God. But yeah, nobility did have a higher life expectancy. That's true, Lord Toth, because uh, people would, you know, they had the be the best of everything and they weren't out true. there. That's true. They, they lived cleaner lives and were fed. They were fed. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that, that moment when he comes back and the king's there and he says that line and it, it, it hit me hard because I... I had a feeling because they didn't say it. They just said, she's going to be leaving for Paris at six. And I go, uh-huh. And? Yep. Why are you leaving at that? I know. I know. I know. And just because you can tell the way he's talking, you're like, oh, something's wrong. It's great writing. It's such great writing. And you just like, I need you to, at, with every death, you know, the hospital say you have to say like this person's dead. Otherwise it's not finalized. And I, I felt that moment where it's like, you, ha you have to say it. Otherwise I'm not going to believe she's dead Yeah. and pan over. They had a couple Ugh. words, but she's leaving. And then of course, that's when he admits that, you know, she had lived a great life at, until 43, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no. And the doctor's face just like, he knew 
You know, it was that was a devastating moment. And watching the king mourn her and the doctor mourn her both at the same time. And then when the doctor or I'm sorry, the king, and that's a really nice moment between them, the king of France and the doctor, when he gives him the letter and he, you know, he wants to know what she says naturally. And then, you know, realizes like, oh, that's a private moment. It was meant to be for him. It's not meant for me. And so he's like, of course, quite and right. he's okay he's, with it. He's fine with it. Yes. Oh, my God. It's just, he, ugh. He, he's the king. So Most people acquiesce to him, like his, his command. So it's kind of weird to see him be just like, no, like, I get it. That That's between you guys. I'm not going to get in the middle of that. Exactly. So, oh my god there's a cute but the maturity in, in this episode the emotions and the the writing uh, kudos to the writing I, and i can't say this enough but like you created a character that i have like loved instantly the the little girl seemed like so cute so adorable so nice into the teenager i was like yes i love her i love her i can't i can't help but love her yeah. Yeah. No, you, there's no part of you. That's like, I hate this woman. She's just such a likable character and she's so sure of herself. And I think that's something okay. that, yeah, like you don't see all that often and watching a woman, especially then, you know, and then the King talking about her too. She always worked too hard. She had, she had passions in life. Yeah. yeah. She, and she, she did it. And I just, I, Oh, you got it. You do. You love her for that. She's an inspiring character, I think, mm -hmm. especially for. See, this is how you write a good fucking female character. Do you see this? Do you see this, writers of today? <laughs> do you? <laughs> Real, and and that's the thing. Like, I I think they they just automatically think, oh, I'm a female. I am amazing. No, not every female is amazing. No, there yeah, are bad that's... ones all over the place. There are some really terrible ones. <laughs> you you need to you need to create a reason for us to relate to. Any character doesn't matter. I mean, freak. I loved a tin robot dog. I canine. But, yeah. Like how, when the canine dog died to sa sacrifice, a sacrifice to help the people you like love. Yeah. That is something to commend. Uh, so, yeah. Moffat was the writer. Uh, Stephen Moffat was great. He did a good job. I have and to Russell say. T. Davies also. They had some really good. Oh God, they had some great episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Xander's rants for four ninety nine says big finish audio drama ninth Doctor episode called Auld Lang Syne is about a lady meeting Doct uh, the Doctor once a year on New Year's for a, a year. Clearly inspired by this episode. Ooh. Ah. I need to listen to that at some point. I, I've always heard about these audio dramas, but I never listened to them. And mm -hmm. the, but I know that the, I know um, Christopher Eccleston came back for some of them. So like, there's some recognized voices. Oh, that'd be great to hear his voice again. I know he's taken away from us too quickly. I really I mean, wish he didn't he'd die. Gotten another, no, yeah. but he should have gotten <laughs> at least one more season. I agree. At least. Yeah. Yeah. It would have. It would have been nice because he he was a, he was a great doctor. Oh, oh mm -hmm. different but great. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. And um, there was this nice moment between Rose and her as well when Rose came to tell her about like in five years, this is when I what's going to happen. This is what you need to do. And it kind of took me took me back to when she was even talking to the, the companion from the past, like his past and how I feel like she kind of it's taking that role, like, you need to do this, and, like, I get it, and all this stuff between you and the doctor, because he's great, and she, she's obviously seen all these women in his life that have enhanced it, and in a way, the doctor is kind of like the king, in a he sense. He kind of is, you're right, he, he is, it's just, it, it's got to be lonely being a king, right, because you alone are respect. Like you have people that you rely on and people that, you know, can sort of help you, but no one's really going to know what it's like to be the king to rule a country unless they're also a king and to rule a bunch of people. And I feel like it's like that with mm -hmm. the doctor because he's the last of his kind, you know, he's, there's no, there are no other time Lords and he is like ultimately alone, you know, he can have these companions with him and he can have these people with him and they touch his life and he takes little pieces from each of them. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he has to go on by himself because they can't live as long as he does. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, just brew <laughs> uh, says that's how good Tenant was, though. I thought no one could follow Eccleston. Didn't even want to like Tenant, but he wins you over so easily. And everyone yes. has told me. Everyone has yeah. told me that uh, he does. And there was a line. Um, where was it? Here. So when Ro when the Rose went to meet the her thirty two year old uh, queen, uh, the queen said. One must tolerate demons for the sake of an angel. And hearing that line was like, dang. Because, I mean, she, she said, every time I get the angel, I get the demon. You you can't have one without the other. So it is so right. worth it. And those two related to each other because Rose sees it all the time. She sees a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, she's excited to see the crazy stuff. But these adventures will never replace anything. And that's the life of a companion. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I feel like it's kind of like that. That's a decent analogy, a good analogy for life, too, because if you think about all the good that we get, any good moment, it, mm -hmm. it all comes with the bad. It, it does. You, you and can't have one without the other. You you have to experience bad so the good actually feels good. That's why a lot of people who um, who don't experience like bad things in life, they always look for the next kind of high whether it be using money, using drugs, drugs yep. alcohol, any any of that, it do, it doesn't matter. Like it's all um, finding a vice. It it that that shouldn't be what makes you compare the good to the bad. It should it should be just life experience in general. And it doesn't have to be tragic. It could just be like, oh my god, fights. You know, uh, a breakup. That's not necessarily tragic. It sucks, but you know, think you happen. get through it. Yeah, you do you do. Uh, so yeah, we got Andrew Matthews for two pounds saying hi, Rocky. Yes, Rocky is right you know, over there. I, look at him. <laughs> I saw him back there, like going in his little circles, and they finally lies down. He's so <laughs> cute. So oh my cute. god, I know, I know. I I don't know why he's up here versus downstairs with Mark. So hey, <laughs> hey, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> we got Ruben Christopher Haynes. Uh, is a member for seven months. Dang, says David Tennant is tragic romantic doctor i relate what the uh well yes i know your history so that is that is a tragedy this is why they br they're bringing him back uh member look for my rose he's looking for his rose oh you will find yes. her reuben yes I, I love that you're working on yourself so uh with that will come love as well i agree Thank you again, Ruben. Uh, we got Mad Amos for $5. Thank you so much. You would love the fourth Doctor series. Lots of canine. <laughs> Is that where he originates from? As Probably. Well as, um... That would be my guess. Because he's with, if he came with, if he stays with Sarah Jane, and she came in for the fourth Doctor and then into the fifth uh, Doctor. So that would make mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I probably would. We we said that we might go back to the original we might not, but we'll have to see. We'll have to we'll see have how to things see, go. Because yeah. we got we got lots of things in the uh a lot. The a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in the future chamber. We yeah. want to watch. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mad Amos. Uh we have backhand 187 for 10 Australian. It says hi, ladies. Loves and hugs. Thank you so much, backhand. Uh love and hugs to you too. I, I always love the chat. Um, so, ooh, is there anything else that you kind of wanted to say? Uh, oh, I like this, this one line. Mm -hmm. They're like, w can you use the TARDIS to go back? But he had already said, we're part of the timeline. We can't do that. So yep. it is a one-off line that's going to be super important in the later episodes because I've always thought that, like, can we just go back and change things? I mean, they also did that technically for her dad went back, but I think that he was like, mistake. No nope, mistake. It, it ended in it ended in disaster and they barely managed to fix things. And it was really mm -hmm. just because the sacrifice of Rose's dad that fixed things. Yes. Yes. And then also, uh, Seeing David Tennant galloping on a horse through a mirror. Tell me that wasn't amazing. Tell me that oh wasn't amazing. That was the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I love it. I love it. It was like the most like, oh, that was a Chad moment. A Chad okay. moment. 
Yes. Okay. You see a man ride a horse and you're like, oh, there's something very attractive about this. Like, I don't know what it is. Uh, you yeah. know, he's like dominating a horse. <laughs> <laughs> dominating but like making it submissive to him and you're like right he has a commanding presence and this horse is obeying him that is pretty cool it is the opposite of mr hands if you don't know what mr hands is don't oh, look it up you know i, See, I knew you know oh, i knew you oh. knew <laughs> you know what my favorite was watching chrissy watch it like oh uh, I, I i didn't watch her watching it like the actual video of it but just mm -hmm. her her face uh. It's really the noise, too, that get you, like, when you hear it go in and the guy's like, and that noise that he makes, you're just like, oh. That's not okay. No. It's not okay. Why am I watching this? What's why, happening Why right would you now? think you would survive that? I'm just I, it's, it's, a ter it's a terrible idea. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting called out in the chat. <laughs> Extra girl spoon visibly. <laughs> Because it's I'm I I tell everyone if you don't fall in love with David Tennant and Doctor Who I don't trust you. It's you, you can't not. You watch the show and you're like, oh my god, oh god. Uh, and then the other the this is one of the last ones that I want to kind of mention. So Renette goes, this is the King of France, and he goes, I'm the Lord of Time. <laughs> I was like, all right there, sir. You're trying to like showboat or something. A little bit. <laughs> and also, to be fair, I, I got to give the edge to the doctor on that one. The King of France is cool and all. And he was he was attractive, whoever that actor is. I don't know who they got to play him, but <laughs> um, but the Lord of the Lord of a time Lord who travels through space and time. That's that freaking charming. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. I just was so shocked about that. I was like, this is the best line in this episode because he has never, well, he refers to himself as a time lord, but not lord of time. So, like, lord it's a title. Of time. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little jealous, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, very. <laughs> not visibly, but just, you know, he, how, uh, you know, so, he's not going to fight him, but just, just a little, just a little knock at the king. Yeah, just you know, he had to he had to throw that in there to be like, look, dude, I know you know that I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lot cooler, <laughs> so much cooler than anyone else here, <laughs> <laughs> including you, <laughs> including you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, Lord Thought, thank you for the two Canadian dollars. Uh, says, can we get an X Ray Zia and Chrissy whipped cream night? <gasps> That I would think, be fun. Ooh, it would be really fun. Um, it would just have to happen when I can come down uh, to the New York area. Yes, if that if that ever happens, we ever come down, we have to get together a hundred percent and we'll do a whipped cream night. Do a whipped cream night. Yeah, do some shenanigans. That'll be really fun. Oh my god! And I want to join your snack stream. <laughs> <gasps> that would be awesome. <laughs> I I'll bring some Canadian snacks. Yes, that would be the best. And then I'll get some like random like New York stuff that you can get around here, and we'll trade. I love. Oh that my idea. gosh, that's perfect. Lord Thought, thank you for inspiring a. Uh... <laughs> we have a whole field trip now. <laughs> and you're really close so <laughs> it's we're really not that far right like it's, uh -huh. yeah Ooh. we're not very far at all uh what, what what show was that um the one on wednesdays the uh crack of the unqualified experts unqualified experts yes <laughs> there was like a, a little clip of like christy just grabbing lip cream from between your legs and i'm just like oh my god i can just see the chat just dying that was the i for honestly forgot about that until backhand uh one of my wonderful mods he does a, a bunch of gifts and he'll clip everything and make gifts of like all the best moments which like thank god i have him because i'll look through the gifts and i'm like oh my god that's right and that one <laughs> was so perfect it was so good <laughs> so good Yep, yep. It's uh, <laughs> and uh, well, I guess yeah, wet spot as well would be fun if I ever went on yes. that. Yes, wet spot is amazing. I love wet spot. I love doing anything with Chrissy. Mm -hmm. oh. In person is always more fun. So exactly, in person is so cool, and being in a studio is awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. Is there anything I kind of want to like mention? I guess. 
uh, the at the very end when you pan out from the ship and the reason why they chose Madame Pompadour, uh, the ship was called SS Madame Pompadour, and it was just like <gasps> I thought I was done with the surprises, and that's good writing, one damn it. Time. That's good one writing. One last one, because why is she so special? Because she literally is the ship. She's the ship. That's why they found they found her. And that makes so much sense. And you're like, oh, my God. That's, yep. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Crazy. It's crazy. Uh, so cool. Yeah. The, uh, those robots, them crazy robots. Uh, yeah. You don't have anything else you want to say about that episode I before we move on? Don't think so. I could probably, like, talk about it forever. But we do have two other episodes to get to, which it, they are good episodes. It's just really hard to follow the girl in the fireplace. So you get to like the Cybermen, which the Cybermen is, they're a great villain. They're a phenomenal. Ooh, yeah. They they almost are, they almost could be as scary as the Daleks, but because their fallacy is a chip. Yeah. Or um, the signal, I guess. It just, it's that, that, that that's too easy to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. in, in in my opinion and uh it, it was uh they're they're pretty scary i mean the premise of them are very scary the premise is scary and they also share this is i feel like this is something that is written into a lot of of villains and not in just this show but in other shows too and it makes sense that this is what's so terrifying to us because we're such emotional beings is the same thing with the Daleks, same thing with the Cybermen is they don't have any emotion. They can't feel anything. So mm -hmm. they lack empathy and they lack the ability to look at humanity the same way that we do. So to them, they're just like, why wouldn't you want to get upgraded? We're clearly superior. Yeah. And, and it's kind of funny because my, my whole life, I, I've kind of known that we kind of need to feel pain. Like you hear stories about the kids that don't feel pain and they like scratch the eyes out at nighttime and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Or they don't realize doing something um, repetitively is hurting them. So then they end up hurting themselves beyond repair, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, you don't want to live without pain. Pain is important for a reason. Yes. Same thing with emotional pain. Like if you think about People who are, end up or are, you know, psychopaths or they end up being serial killers, it's oftentimes they can't feel pain or empathy. It's an important trait as a human to have mm -hmm. because if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to live in the world with other people. That's sort mm -hmm. of the whole thing about living in a society, sharing with other humans is having empathy. And if you don't have that, then it's not going to be a very nice world to live in. Yeah. Uh, empathy is uh, something that we learn as we get older. And it's how we relate to each other. Like, why bother having friends if you can't empathize their situations, have chats about stuff? So, and th and I think that's why the doctor really loves humans in general. Like, they're um, complex creatures, maybe simple in other ways. Uh, and just th the emotions is what makes them so fascinating to him. And clearly, he needs a companion because he doesn't have all the emotions of a human. He needs, he needs someone to humanize him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And there, there have been so many times where the companion will bring him back down to earth and be like, no, we can't do that because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. terrible. <laughs> Which is, it's funny because we we're getting all these uh, conclusions on all these episodes from this, this great writing and characterization to make these conclusions. And I don't think that we can necessarily do that with a lot of the shows that we have today. And, because it, it doesn't it doesn't get this deep like even this idea of having emotions like shows don't I haven't seen a lot hit no. me to, like this. That's what makes Doctor Who so unique, so unique. Or mm -hmm. it was it was so unique. Yeah, <sighs> uh, seeing a, a parallel universe was it was kind of interesting. I thought that you know it, when you see uh, into the Spider Verse when they go through all the different like worlds that was kind of fun. Seeing this world was like full of zeppelins and headphones. Yeah, those like earphones. And it was it of course that's a means to control people. That that makes perfect sense. But it was just and as soon as you see it, you're like, something's fishy going on here. But to them it was so normal. It's like everybody has a pair. And if you don't, like that's weird. You're weird. It's just like another probably like if someone came from an alternate dimension to ours and they didn't have phones. And oh my god! Have, like, why are you carrying these boxes everywhere? Yeah, like what are you doing with those? That's like that's not how we communicate. <laughs> like we communicate telepath, like whatever, whatever it is. That'd be such a trip. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that that was interesting. Having the zeppelins 
was, I guess, like the uh, Range Rovers or like the sexy cars of, the, of that parallel universe. I thought that was a little silly. Like They were very goofy, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason they needed it was for like the ending when they ran away of the, the second episode. But it almost seemed unnecessary to have them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, have yeah. to agree with that. They were weird. But, um, uh, how yeah, did you... Oh, go, oh, ahead, go sorry. ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I just thought it was also cool how they explored the idea of seeing your parents or loved ones in an alternate reality or a parallel universe because it's them, but it's not them. They're not yes. your parents. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be such a bizarre feeling. Like, I couldn't admit, because I also, I lost my mom when I was young. I can't imagine going to an alternate universe and being like, oh my God, that's my, that's my mom right there. But like, that's mm -hmm. not my mom. Yeah. Dude, it would be so bizarre. It's definitely the nature versus nurture. Like what, how much is what in each of these worlds? And so of course, genetically, they're still the same people that you know, but because of whatever experiences that they have had, they're not doing the same things. Um, so, of course, not having Rose uh, as a human, but as a dog. Um, you know, Mickey's grandma still around. Um, all that. I thought that was kind of a interesting thing. Where Even seeing Rose's dad actually succeed. Right. Which is such a, like, all of his schemes finally worked out. And seeing his parents still, or seeing her parents still together. And this one also kind of hits you when she's having a conversation with her mom because she feels this connection because to her, those are her parents. But her mom is like, mm -hmm. I don't know who this woman is. And she's like, who are you? You're nothing. You're the help. And it's because her mom, they don't have that shared connection, that shared bond. Because mm -hmm. you're. It's crazy how much – and this is something that I feel like people don't think about a lot when – people constantly spend time judging everybody else. And this is something that you see so much on the internet. We spend a lot of time there. Um, and and P I think this is something people forget is that everyone's view of the world is different because it's based not only on the way they were brought up, sort of, I, I use tribe loosely, their surroundings and their experiences. And so it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. So everyone just assumes like, well, the way I think is the right way because that's how I feel about it. And everyone mm -hmm. else needs to live the way that I think because that's how my life experiences uh, dictated the way that I feel. And, and there's this weird where they can't see like, no, people have different points of view because they've lived different lives. And this is illustrates that so well. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's crazy. Yep. Yep. Putting, uh, putting your feelings on someone else's experiences is not exactly okay. exactly like your life has nothing to do with my life it's a very different life and we've lived different lives and so we're going to have different outlooks it's interesting yeah and while the only person of course that actually met their parallel universe self was mickey with ricky with ricky we <laughs> finally got to see ricky and his name was ricky that was the best thing ever i forgot <laughs> that the doctor used to call him ricky <laughs> the first well this not the first doctor the ninth doctor kept calling him ricky and that was so funny and then finally oh look he's ricky well he's actually ricky which was like absolutely so 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 funny and he ends up being like this like uh chad of a man very similar but different braver version and i just it it was cool to see the difference of what each were maybe having rose made him a bit more docile i don't know because R ricky never waited for anyone whereas mickey was just like i'm waiting for my rose to come back from the doctor's adventures <laughs> he was he was always waiting i thought it was nice that he took a leap to go travel with them and and he does have a really good arc in this episode or in these two episodes i guess we're sort of talking about it as one because it's a two-parter but um the fact that he ultimately decided to stay to take sort of take ricky's place and and i think he really realized you know and he talks about it he's like it's good it's always going to be the two of you isn't it and so it's he he realized that he actually had to let her go. And there's no better way to do that than to strand yourself in a parallel universe that you can't come back from and they can't come to. Like, that's a definitive, mm -hmm. we're done. <laughs> yeah. And well, it was it was interesting. So like there were, um, there was probably a couple moments, but the, the one that stood out to me was, you know, um, they had, you know, landed in the parallel universe. Rose had found out about her parents, where they live, that 
she didn't exist here. And um, she's like, I need to see them. We have 24 hours left. I have time. Like you go, you know, I'm going to go see them. And then Mickey goes, I, I got things to do too. And like, they're both leaving. And then he goes to the doctor. Well, you can only go after one and we know who you're going to go after. Yeah. And I was like, whoo. And he did. And the doctor knew that he was, he's like, shit, he's absolutely right. I can't even say anything to that. He just has 24 hours and immediately, of course, goes after Rose. Yeah. Which it, it, it kind of like for him, he always knew he was the third wheel between the two of them together. And he just, he needed to le live his own life. And we, we always made fun of him. Maybe not us specifically, maybe us a little bit uh, <laughs> about his uh, uh, sad arc at the very most of the beginning to all of it. Except yeah. For the end. Yeah. yeah. A lot of sad, bit of simping. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of simping. A lot of simping. Um, and he, he just, he, she always felt that she could go back to him if he was a safe option. And that, he was that, that did there. happen a lot. Mm -hmm. It did happen a lot. And so he knew he was always second best. And I think taking the stand was, you know, good for him. And it was so good that even the doctor respected him. Yes. Yes, he did. He finally respected him taking a stand and standing up for himself. And you know what? I did too. I was really happy that he finally did that instead of waiting and then sort of inserting himself into places he clearly wasn't wanted because it was like the doctor tolerated him, but he obviously didn't want him there. And Rose was visibly upset. Like, yeah, they had their moments when they were traveling together, but she was visibly upset that he was coming. She's like, this is yeah. my thing. Like, this, this is not this for is, you. Him and I are together. Like, don't, you know, your, your life there, my life here, separate. She's like, she's like, don't come cock block me on the TARDIS. All right, buddy. <laughs> 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 yeah it, it it just it felt sad for him to just be that side character and it was it was nice for him to have uh a purpose besides waiting for her like him going and saving the world from these cybermen and and he has grandma who's blind so who does she know this is actually mickey or ricky Nope, she doesn't know. She hears the voice. It sounds like him. She can feel his face. It feels like him. So Ricky gets that piece back. You know, he gets his grand that died. And then she has someone that can take care of her. So I think yeah. that that's, honestly, it's a win-win. Win. Like, so sweet because she, that moment when they were like, that carpet that's sticking out, he's like, I don't have anyone that can fix it. He's like, okay, I'll basically do it, <laughs> essentially. Yes. So, yeah. And it, it was, uh, I also thought that it was really sad when, Rose's not her real mom, but her her mom in that universe got turned into a Cyberman. And it was it was really sad because her parents in that world were splitting up. Right. Like, I. Oh, my God. Yeah. The way they unveiled it. I actually. Oh, so that conversation she first had with her dad, I thought it was I thought he was going to start hitting on her. <gasps> that like, would have been so terrible. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> so not again. We, they already kind of did that when she went back in time to meet him, and that was enough. I mean, it, it could have happened if he was having a breakup. Okay, it could have happened. I'm it glad they have. didn't do it. Oh, I'm no, glad they didn't creepy. do it. Too creepy. So he was just like, "You're being weird or creepy. How interested in us?" <laughs> yeah, right. She's like, he's like, "Why do you care so much?" And he <laughs> took it a lot better than than her her mom, I guess Jackie did, because she was, you know. I feel like Jackie has always been a mother figure because she kind of had to grow up with her as her mm -hmm. daughter. And it seemed with the short time we've seen her dad with baby Rose, obviously wasn't very long, uh, unfortunately, but he's always had that paternal sense about him. So I, I feel like because of the events that led up to his death and having the kid on her own, Jackie had to become a mom. So she, she had a lot more empathy and, you know, care. So who, who knows if just it's different worlds and different right. experiences. Exactly. Without having to become a mom, she might not necessarily naturally have that. And it sort of felt like that a little bit. That and mm -hmm. I think she was probably defensive because her marriage was ending and, you know, clearly they weren't happy. And she he forgot what birthday she had. Right. From her biography. Like there was like, tension. I am 39. I am not 40. <laughs> I don't know why I said like, like that. I'm actually 40, but in my biography, I said I'm 
That's I'm 39. My auntie Becky every year for her birthday was 29. I honestly had no idea how old she actually was because it was just the running joke that she was 29 every year. And I know it had to have been somewhere in the 40s, but it was like, oh, oh my she's God, that's hilarious. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> um, let's see. We have JS Pena. Thank you for the dollar ninety nine. Says Cybermen would be great for Mortal Kombat. Ooh, that would be amazing. I would love to see their finishing kill. <laughs> 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 really uh, good. Draco Orium for two Australians says you should see the OG Cybermen they had handles I think where they the showed an OG Cybermen in the episode where we they went to that um, it was the, the uh, museum the they, underground um, yeah 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 and you saw I, the Cybermen head I, think I didn't that's... see I, you know what I probably saw him but like didn't understand right. who they were uh, oh yeah it's way more prominent <laughs> than the current one. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, and Tricky for $5. <laughs> Thank you, Tricky. Sorry. I have to read this. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? <laughs> I'll read it. I just, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I like, pre-read it just now, and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> um. <laughs> Prissy and X and girl just screaming all over Zia. <laughs> I'll show myself out. Tricky. Tricky, you naughty boy. <laughs> you naughty boy. <laughs> I Mal mean, that's not inaccurate, but... It won't be inaccurate when I head over to New York. <laughs> uh, I'll say, if I, if I go by myself or if, like, Mark comes with me, I'll be like, uh, this will be my bye to him. I'm going over to Zia's now and I'm going to cream all over her. <laughs> with Chrissy. I hope you have a good night, baby. We're going to have to kick Nick out for this one. Be like, go do things. Yeah, Nick, you set up up the stream (laughs) and it will be fine. And then set up the stream and leave. (laughs) That's all we need. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I like that super chat. <laughs> it was funny. I, just, I, had a to, I had to prep myself to say it, and I thought I wasn't going to laugh, but I, I was so laughing through the whole thing. <laughs> Basically, we're very mature. You can tell. Absolutely. Absolutely <laughs> mature. So. Oh, no. Um, okay. So, what other things that are kind of uh, like very interesting in this? Um, oh, Lumic in the wheelchair. Yes. I, uh, that one, he, he actually was a really good villain. Like, I think him trying to create the Cybermen. I mean, I don't know if it's the same guy that created Cybermen in the first place. That remains to be seen. You know, but... what? I actually don't know. I think the Cybermen are actually from somewhere else, but I think that's classic who. So I'm actually, I actually don't know, but, uh, I do like that he met the end that he thought he wanted, but realized, you know, he obviously was doing that to seek immortality because he was dying. Mm -hmm. But for him, it was like, he wanted to cling to life as much as possible. So for, he didn't want to become a Cyberman until his last breath. That's what he said. He's like, no, with my last breath. And they forced him. (laughs) They forced him, which honestly is, that's a fantastic arc for surprise him. yes surprise such Absolutely. a good like t- have a taste of your own medicine and you decided this you decided this and the fact that they killed all the cybermen by making them feel and mm-hmm. when they were talking to the girl that was supposed to get married and she's <gasps> lying there and she's oh like cold so cold oh it was oh crazy. Wait, and then she goes uh where's gareth and i'm like is that Ooh. her husband she's Ooh. Like, oh not and this is like she didn't need to say she's getting married married that line that that line hits so much better the way it happens like we're not supposed to see each other before that night and i'm like before the the before the next day and i'm like so sad they did they did a great job with that having that real personal touch in there because otherwise you just see them as these machines and it's easy to forget that they were once actual people Mm -hmm. and tell you they throw those moments in again. Great writing, great writing, great and just great portrayal. Like the, the person in the suit did not have to act, or wh- whoever's that voice was, 
did not have to act very much, but it just, it hit well. Yes. Yes. It hit really um, well. Cybermen 1.0 come from the planet Mondas, and then Disparo said he's the first person to create them in that dimension, and Classic Who is different. Wow. Okay, got it. And then Tricky Thank says, you. I think the Cybermen are supposed to be some kind of inevitable result of merging man and machine. They always show up. Got gotcha. inevitability. Okay. Hmm. It is inevitable. Hmm. I'm wondering when we're going to get to that point. I feel like it's got to be. Already? Right, right? Like we're getting there a little bit. They're wanting to put chips in people and – we're we're like um so even like prosthetics I'd say we're getting to a point that some people actually have like um attached to their nerves so that they can move like hand movements like I, I've heard of that so cool it's really expensive though. it's, it's okay, really expensive I can imagine but um getting chips and once that neural neural link app happens because it will happen mm -hmm. um that's when i think it's going to get a lot of like i mean even now already ethical ethicism in technology has been very difficult because people create technology and i'm sure they have good intentions with everything that they of make course. well I mean, not everything yeah. most oh. things but people will take that technology like phones and have people calling you all the time for duck cleaning, for <sighs> uh, scam calls. You know, there's always uh, insidious people out there that will yes. take advantage. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, Urian Sanborn for $20. Thank you so much. Uh, Urian says, OG Cybermen are from Mondas. Mondas? AKA the 10th planet, which was supposed to be a twin of Earth that got knocked out of the solar system. They converted themselves cyber form to survive the coldness of space. That actually is a really cool origin story. That is a very cool origin story. I love that. That they they did it out of necessity to not die. Kind of kind of the same as uh, Lumic in a sense. In mm -hmm. a sense. Mm -hmm. But I mean, oof, that that's horrible. That's a horrible way to die. <laughs> That's a terrible. Oh. And then also just to lose your humanity like that. Is there really mm -hmm. a reason to keep living if you're just a cold, unfeeling piece of machine? You can't even make babies. Uh, yeah, exactly. You can't make babies. You can't bang. So what's life without sex? I mean, for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you can't feel it. You can't, exactly. You can't taste food. That's like, yeah. oh, that was actually my first thought was the like, I can't thing. eat. Excuse me. Oh, hell no. Oh, mm -mm. hell no. Would I? Nope. What's the, no point? Point. What's the point? What is the point of living then? I, I agree. I agree with that. Uh, and Andrew Matthews for five British pounds says, Doctor Who nearly reaches the heights of Wheel of Time with these episodes. In what way? I'm so curious because I've always heard such big, th bad things about Wheel of Time. Or do you mean like the books are episodes? I heard the books are really good. If, that, if yeah. you mean the books, then I understand. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. Maybe he's talking uh -huh. about the books. Because the show I watched, but I've never read the books. Oh, so I, I don't have anything to compare it to. A couple minutes of that show and it was horrid. It's not it was great. so bad. It Ugh. is not great. Yeah, don't don't watch the show. Watch Disbrew, who's in the chat, by the way. Uh, sub to Disbrew, who watches Wheel of Time so that we don't have to. And his uh, takes on it are way better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So, um, ugh, I'm trying to think. What other things have happened in this? Uh, watching them take over the humans with the earpiece, I, I, I could totally see that in the future as well. As well, like some yep. sort of... And then you have, of course, the uh, the faction that's against them, the preachers, like definitely can see that where they're like oh, yeah. fighting them unplugged. It feels almost even like Matrixy, except not yes. in the Matrix. Yes. No, I know exactly what you're saying. And it reminds me of, I think I brought this up on this show before, actually. I, I, it's just because there are so many parallels to this, these books I read in, in like high school, maybe even middle school. But I remember reading these books. The first one is called um, Uglies, I'm pretty sure is the first one. And I think they're making a show out of it. And that, and I know I've talked about this before, but there are so many parallels. And so I know I bring, keep bringing it up. It's the one where they, oh, they all get plastic surgery when they, they reach all get plastic surgery when they reach 16. So that everyone's attractive. So it puts everyone on a level playing field. So they say that, oh, uh, attractive people don't have more opportunities uh, than everybody else because they're attractive. That's how it used to be. Now everyone's attractive. So mm -hmm. it's just a level playing field. But while they're in there, they, they mess with their brains and do this like mind mm -hmm. control stuff, but nobody knows about it. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's such a trip like that. And I feel like that's 
there's always some version of that. And I can't help but think that it's got to be in our future at some point, right? Like, Well, I mean, like they try to even do that now. Um, if you want to believe that with the media, that's up to you. I'm not saying that specifically right. here, but trying to create a narrative. And this creates a direct link. Like that when that moment that everyone stopped and they uploaded all the news and a joke and all this into their brains, I was like, that is screwed up. Yeah. Also, what if you're like diving in the water? I guess you take them out, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's like... true. <laughs> or maybe they're waterproof. You'd think they'd have to be waterproof, right? Like if yeah. the technology is that advanced, I would hope. I would hope. That is, yeah. It, it just, it, when they were talking about the the preachers who have the gospel truth and they're unplugged and they are all, all about freedom. And I was just like. Hey, I feel like that's happening even now. It is. It absolutely is happening even now. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of parallels with this world, uh, with these episodes. It's it's very wild. And mm -hmm. when we saw that moment with the, uh, the, the, I wish we did something with this. So when they took the homeless men and the one guy with the camcorder, nothing came of the camcorder. Yeah, that's true. You're right. That was something that never came back. That's absolutely, that was such a great, because that is something that absolutely would happen. That was such a realistic moment where they're like, well, oh, yeah, gonna... use, use the people that are not contributing to society in order to do things. I could so see people doing that. Oh, yeah. yeah. People that won't be missed. So that's it's unless some reporter is like, what's that? What's going on? And starts investigating it. A lot of these people don't have families. And if they do, their families don't know where they are. So they just assume they might be dead. Yeah. On yep. drugs and or no 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 food. Mm -hmm. And God. Uh, uh again, this world does have torchwood too, by the way. How did I miss that? Did I completely miss that? Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a, the scene where Rose is talking to her dad, and at the end of the conversation, he goes to talk to, I think it was Steve. And he asks something about Torchwood. And I'm thinking, dang, dad knows about Torchwood as well wow. in this world. Wow. And I completely and miss it because I watched those two like a couple of weeks ago, but I rewatched Girl in the Fireplace today just because I love it so much. And I was like, ah, let's talk about this fresh. But mm -hmm, I just completely mm -hmm. forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like even the idea of Torchwood, because that was the moment I was like, maybe he actually is good because he's kind of like working with Lumic and it's really confusing me but we don't really know much about him except that he's like a good guy in another universe but it doesn't necessarily mean he's a good guy in this universe and then having him maybe associated with Torchwood who I think is like a good group of people uh and then at the end of course he we find out he's the mole feeding he's the, the mole that's right oh. yes oh my god so he is a good guy in this in this world thank, which, god. thank goodness we right just sure until the very end right you're like oh no could he be bad he could because he could be like yeah he, he really could have been just like oh i'm a corporate person that makes so much money and i'm just used to this lifestyle now so i'm kind of stuck and this is the way i continue to make money Exactly. And and he people get really greedy and they'll do anything for money. That's something that we see all like literally every day. That's every politician money can corrupt. Money corrupts everyone almost. Yeah. 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 Uh Dispru says, which is weird because Torch was wood was created specifically because of the doctor in ours. Exactly. Yeah, we don't know why it was created in this universe per se. That's they, true. They don't have well, I'm assuming this. So even throughout all the parallel universes, there's no other doctor or TARDIS. Not right? Because that that's what he said. That's he said not there's... ever been explored. Yeah. The the doctor... Well, maybe there was a doctor that affected them to create that. Who knows? But since all the Time Lords are dead, um, there's no one to help bridge the two because his TARDIS wouldn't be able to travel in that universe. I thought that was like so interesting. Also, um, him blowing on <laughs> that's a strong blow blowing Powerful on blow. what sorry that I little totally light that. well the light so when, remember when he found the light in the the bottom of the TARDIS and he's like I gotta I gotta recharge it and so he blows on it he's like that took 10 years of my life and I was like dang 
That's a powerful blow. <laughs> That's a powerful blow. Holy moly. <laughs> Girls wish they had that power of blow. They could give if, them. If they want. I'm sorry. I'll give you 10 years of my life. <laughs> Maybe I'll put that in my next like renewal of my vows. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like oh, the doctor. I, <laughs> I shouldn't. I shouldn't. <laughs> no, but that would be really funny. <laughs> I would like that a lot. Uh. So they said they could be, but they never mentioned him in this dimension, which I'm glad they kind of didn't because that could get messy. It could get messy and it could get weird. And I like the fact that he's the only doctor. Mm -hmm. He's, like he's the only one. Yeah. We don't want we don't want any other ones. I'm good. Nope. I don't need any more doctors. They already ruined everything with the timeless child and some fucking other first doctor and dumb shit. I'll be very sad when we get there. I don't think I'll even get there fully. It will just be. Watch maybe one episode, maybe two. And then you'll be like, ugh, what the hell is this crap? No, that's thank what, you. That's what I did. No, I watched the you. entire first season. And then when they asked me to, they were like, do you want to come back and cover Doctor Who the second season? Because I was covering that after Buzz at the time. And I literally was like, I can't do it. It makes me, it made me too sad. Like I was so bummed watching that mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. Um, The, oh, that final scene when they're, with Lumic and his final body form and the doctors speaking to the camera to uh, Mickey after he grew balls. Um, Cause they tried to, they tried to sideline Mickey again. He tried to. They, he did. I'm happy that I'm, that's why I'm so happy that Mickey finally stood up for himself. Cause he deserved it. He's like, I'm not a tin dog. Yes. Yes. He's like, you go girl. You go girl. You go girl. Oh, <laughs> Mickey. Who's be now a girl sort boss. of Ricky for real. <laughs> yeah. Um, 10 years younger. <laughs> yeah, you'll feel 10 years younger after. <laughs> I'm not. We're children. <laughs> Poor Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say all the time. Nick is like, oh my God. Like I saw the dumbest meme that I posted and reposted in my stories and I literally was laughing until tears were streaming down my face and Nick is looking at me and he's like, what is happening right now? I'm like, I'm sorry. We're, we're immature. Very immature. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> oh, at least myself. Uh, so, Dames. yeah. M Mickey grew balls. He decided to go and, um, you know, help out uh, Jack. I think it was uh, whatever the young blonde kid uh with his mission and i thought it was kind of cool because he actually got to use his um hacking skills that we only have seen once or twice uh he has good tech skills and he, i mean the doctor kind of spelled it out a little too much for my liking but it was so funny he's like uh, any idiot can hack into what what bi biodome was it again a nine oh yeah that one <laughs> the code and all this and text it to and i'm just thinking lumic is not dumb enough to let this happen because he keeps talking and letting it happen <laughs> i did like that a lot it was just so fun like it was very uh um char characteristic of the doctor to just go on for like ever and ever and ever with the chatting <laughs> I did like that a lot. And I like that they do manage to, even though all these episodes were actually pretty serious and there was a lot of heavy stuff in them, but they always manage to inject just the right amount of humor. The right it, amount of humor. It, just, it evens it out a little bit. It's fun. It makes you giggle. It's always at the right time. It's not at yeah. a, a, a right a pivotal moment or no one's getting shut down in like a negative way, um, you know, that doesn't align with the character. Mm -hmm. it, it just it feels very natural to what we know and what we've been told from previous episodes so yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. It, it was nice seeing that and seeing them escape and get free and and of course mickey of course having that moment of yes i'm a grown man now it, grown it was man. nice to see him like going that. off on my own i'm going off, I'm off of, my he's, own i'm gonna be ricky he's he's he's, he's a a Make town Mickey going his own way. You can go your own way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I gotta stop. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, there, was, there was a line he said to that Jack character that was like, I know I have the face of like Ricky, but I'm not here to replace him. Um, 
And and I thought that was kind of sweet. Like, yeah. Because he, he'll, he'll never be the same guy. And we clearly see that with all the other characters that we've kind of met. And, but it's, it's it's just nice to give Rick Ricky his goodbye, so to speak, and carry on a legacy through Mickey. Yeah. And he, in a way, that guy sort of, because the blonde guy, I actually already forget his name, was clearly really devastated at, you know, hearing that Ricky didn't make it. And in a way, he like he, like Ricky, like Mickey said, sorry, he's not taking his place, but in a way, he sort of has his friend back a little mm-hmm. bit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. I like it. I really do. So we, we need to. Uh, well, we won't see any more so far that I know since the time rift has been closed. I I'm sad that if this is Mickey's final, you know, moment. I'm sad that we not we don't get to see more good parts of him, but I think this is a good way to kind of close off his story in a positive manner for everyone. I mean, Rose is sad, but I think that Rose, oh, she has the doctor. She has the doctor. She's going to be fine. It was she nice to see that she cared, though. She did cry. She she really was oh gosh, upset. She, she did. She did. I was not ready for that. They had, oh but God. they had to have their closure. I feel like they needed that. They needed that that moment of closure, and I think it was sad for her because they did kind of experience a lot together, and they were sort of. It seems like they were sort of each other's first loves. You know, they were so young. Now they were growing up and going off into the world, and they're not going to have each other anymore. It was a really yep. sad. It was a sweet, sad moment. But I was. It was good that she understood why he had to do it, and she let him go. You know, she has to let him go. She hasn't let him go this entire time. I know. I know. She keeps dangling a carrot like on a string like he's a horse. It's terrible. And if this is if this is real life and of course uh, without the Doctor Who world and all that happening, if a girl is doing this to you or a guy just like stringing you along and not letting you go, the person who actually needs to leave is the person that's being um uh, keeps getting that little bit of hope. Yeah. Cuz the other person won't. They're so- I don't think she per se is narcissistic in this case, but like if it's a narcissistic person that keeps dragging you, then you need to, you need to leave. They're never going to leave you. They're always going to make you feel bad to. Exactly. And for her, you're right. I don't think it's necessarily that she's narcissistic. I think it was a comfort thing is that she, she was so Mickey was a piece of home in the life that she used to leave that comfortable life. And it was probably comfortable and nice knowing that that was always sort of waiting for her back there. Mm -hmm. No matter what crazy adventures she went on. We always love home and he is home. And yeah. Anytime anything bad happened, we saw the doctor maybe die. And uh she, who'd she go to? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. That was that was a sweet moment. It was a really sweet moment. And he had a he had a funny uh line at the end. <laughs> he was like, uh, we go to Paris uh in, in a van. He's like, Yeah, I uh used a big yellow truck to save the world. <laughs> yes i liked that that was a great line yes. that was really cool <laughs> that was very they brought that back see and it just ricky rick mickey ricky has a lot to offer and i think that he's uh he's a very strong character yeah he just wasn't highlighted enough in comparison to of course the doctor but i think he'll he'll make his mark in this world um and exactly. hopefully uh, i mean who knows what we'll see i have I have a feeling. Saying nothing. My lips are sore. low. I'm I'm hoping we've closed the chapter. And if it's ever reopened, that it's in a good way because it, we always have to leave him in positivity because of how well they did his character. Don't do him dirty. Don't do Ricky dirty. I'm saying nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh Bionis, Bionic Sasquatch has become a member on the banana level. Thank you so much for being a banana. Bananas banana. are so good. They're so good. That. I love that you have bananas. Uh, if you here. become a banana member on my channel, you'll be 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Who's doing the blowing? <laughs> I don't know. Mark. Mark. <laughs> I, I, I ate a banana once on this channel. I'm never doing it. Oh my god! I can't even imagine how many me like memes and and gifts that made. Lord, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> there were many. <laughs> oh yeah, 
Oh my gosh. And they went back home to see Jackie. And I thought that was a beautiful hello again. Yeah, that was really sweet. And then we got the preview for the next episode, which I'm really excited about. I forgot about that episode. It's a good one. It's a good uh, one. What was the preview about? Um, ooh. TVs. TVs. Mm. Um, ooh, interesting. I it's going to be gonna fun. Do with that. Oh, it's going to be so fun. I forgot. I forgot. The next episode is really cool. It's like creepy and awesome. Mm. Okay. Well. I like that um, we're getting to some creepy stuff as we get closer to Halloween. So the next episodes are called The Idiot's Lantern. That's the TV one. Is good. And The Impossible Planet. I already forgot what that is. I'll probably start watching it and be like, ew. Oh, uh, apparently Attack of the Boob Tube. These boobs. They're attacking. Just kidding. I'm, I'm sure the chat would love if you attacked your <laughs> camera with the boobs. <laughs> Smother you with boobs. Ah. <laughs> it's Monster almost boobs. like you guys are getting a motorboating. <laughs> <laughs> Get to do our motorboating. Wait, it's a two-parter? Says I fail? Like, those is two it? episodes together are is a two-parter? Oh, heck. I already forgot. See, look at that. Okay, We, so we need to make two-parter. sure, because if it's not those two together... Well, we'll be then... watching those two anyway, right? Like, we'll be doing the two... Well, if those two are together, that's fine. But if it's the Satan Pit, which is the third, the next episode after those two, then we'll have to watch them all together. Right. Yeah. Chat, please let me know. Please let us know. Let us the know impossible, how we have to watch this. The Impossible Planet is a two parter. So then we have to watch three episodes. Two parter next Satan week. Pit. Is Satan's Pit part of it, you guys? Do we have to watch that? We got, yes. Can okay. someone put in words? Specifically, you have to watch three episodes next week because the second and third episodes are three are two parts. Oh, there's the ood. It's the ood. We're getting to the ood. It's oh, the ood. Sh- oh, yes. Okay, everyone's saying yes. Impossible Planet and Satan Pits are two par- parters. So okay. we have to do three episodes next three week. Three next week. Got it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. okay. So okay. we'll remember to watch three. And I need to start watching them again because now I'm officially caught up on the ones that I watched Yay! while you were away. So I'm watching them again because I okay. couldn't stop watching. And then at one point I was like, stop, Sia, stop. You're almost you done with the do damn it. season. <laughs> I felt very, um, you know, no kidding. I know. I'm so sorry. I was sitting there and I was like, oh, no, stop pressing next. Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. uh, oh, yeah. Three episodes. Such a bummer. Oh, darn. <laughs> I get to watch three. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be really fun. So next week, it's going to be on Zia's channel. Yes, I am excited mm-hmm. to watch three episodes. Oh, my God. Okay. So, yeah, if you guys aren't sub to my channel, we'll do, we're going to be doing it uh, the next three episodes over there. It's just Zia Land on YouTube. X-I-A-L-A-N-D. It's all mm-hmm. one word. And then, yeah, we go back and forth each each week. So we. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Lots to talk about. I'm so Lots excited. of good things. Uh, yes. So, Zia, where can people find you? Uh, if you guys want to follow me on anything, it's pretty much Zia Land everywhere. I've got, I'm pretty much, I've exclusively moved over to YouTube at this point. I'd like to just focus on one platform because I've been sort of spreading myself thin and it just seems silly. And I'd like to just focus on growing one thing. So yeah, Zia Land on YouTube, uh, Zia Land on OnlyFans if you're interested. I also, on Twitter and Instagram, it's Zia underscore Land because Zia Land was taken somehow. Uh, X-I-A <laughs> underscore L-A-N-D. I know. I was like, what the hell? It's always the worst when that happens. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We got uh, Mad Amos for another $5 says, get Gary to join for Impossible Planet in Satan's Pit. Uh, th- he has an open invitation to all of anytime. these. Anytime. So anytime. So uh, yeah, if he expresses he wants it, then you know I'll, sh- I'll shoot him a link or um, God, if he has to figure out how to get onto uh, Discord, I'm going to say good luck. <laughs> I feel like maybe we'll wait until we're back on yours. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was maybe one time we, we had a meeting and he didn't know how to get in the call. So we created the stream. <laughs> <right now. laughs> Love you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Thank you again, Amos. Uh, you can find me, Extra Girl, all over all the platforms, um, as well as Poor Choices and Human Cyber Relations. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, I have Shadowversity coming on to talk about 
marriage relationships and um, inspiring young men. He's been very adamant about spreading uh, words about that and inspiring people. So, you know, we'll have a, a good chat with him then. And thank you, Zia. Again, as always, this was thank you, thank so you. fun. I never uh, get tired of talking about this. Absolutely. Ever. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, chat. Thank you for all the super chats as well. Uh, I can't wait already till next week for three episodes of this show. So yeah, we will see you next time.